A man inserts a live eel into his butt to ease constipation. The police are warning against hammocking on the power lines and bacon might disappear as pig rules take effect. These are the weird stories for Monday on Weird AF News, the only daily weird news podcast hosted by a comedian. I'm Jonesy. I'm your host and producer. Thanks for joining me. I have three weird stories from around the world as usual. Hope you had a nice weekend. Let's do it. A man shoved an eel up his anus in order to fix his constipation, and he nearly died. When you're feeling constipated, as many of us have, who needs more fiber when you've got a live eel that you can put right up your rectum? A Chinese man in Jiangsu province recently inserted, get this, a 20 centimeter long eel into his rectum from the anus in an attempt to relieve the constipation. I don't know what would make him think that this would work. Is this some local superstition in Jiangsu? Let's find out. It says, uh, sadly, the man went to the hospital after enduring pain. <laughs> understandably. The article actually says, understandably. Yeah, he put an eel up his butt. Of course, he experienced a little bit of pain. The doctor who operated on him said that the eel had bitten through the man's... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> this is terrible. The eel bit through the man's colon and entered his stomach, his abdomen. It just started going up into his system. This is like the movie Alien. It said it went in, into his abdomen, which could have caused hemolysis. I don't know what that is. The man survived, as did the eel. Did they pull it out his mouth? It says here, Inserting a live eel into the rectum from the anus is a folk remedy to cure constipation that makes for some jarring stories across China, I'd imagine. And it probably doesn't work a lot of the time. <laughs> I mean, I'd rather be constipated than have an eel biting at my stomach lining. I just would. I'd rather be constipated. I can, I can handle constipation. I can't handle an eel with teeth crawling through my lower intestine. Can't do that. The article says, uh, last year, a man in Guangdong inserted a 40-centimeter-long eel. Oh, you're just going for the record here. Oh, you put a 20-centimeter eel with teeth up your butt? <laughs> I'll, I'll see that 20-centimeter eel. I'll double it. <laughs> in fact, the teeth are longer, too. Beat this. So he inserted a 40-centimeter-long eel up his rectum. This other guy trying to break the Guinness Book of World Records for eel butt insertion. Um, it says here, he inserted that eel with the same hope to relieve constipation. <laughs> it's the same, with the same goal. But it doesn't stop with live fish. Apparently in 2017, a man in Guangdong's Zhongshan shoved a bottle into his bum to fix bowel issues after a spicy meal. The object was so far up the rectum that it required surgery to remove the bottom, uh, the bottle <laughs> out of his bottom. <laughs> Oh, guys are getting inventive here. Just live with the constipation at this point. I mean, it's much better than a glass bottle up your butt, I'd imagine. Or a live eel. Or I, I don't know what else you would put up there. I can, I'd imagine in China they're putting some crazy shit up there. Probably chopsticks. I don't know. They've probably tried everything instead of just living with the constipation, which I admit is uncomfortable. But, you know, it's more comfortable than a 40-centimeter eel with teeth, sharp teeth. <laughs> that can bite through your scrotum, <laughs> come out your pee hole <laughs> on the other side. <laughs> guys, 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 modern medicine, man. What have you? <laughs> I mean, look at I'm open to folk remedies. I really am. But most of those folk remedies sh will involve a tea or herbs of some sort. I'm not messing with amphibians or snakes poking them in my orifices. I just don't, I draw the line at putting a live animal of some sort in an orifice of mine. And just to be clear, the article wants you to know, heads up, there is zero scientific evidence to back up that an eel will do anything for your digestive system except wreak total havoc, which this one did. Police warn against hammocking on power lines. Utah, the Weber County Sheriff's Office, say they've noticed a recent increase in people using hammocks on high-voltage 
electricity towers, and power lines, <laughs> among other dumb activities. <laughs> Won't you hammock on a power line? Are you okay? Officials say hammockers have been climbing the towers on the bench area between North Ogden and Pleasant View. You guys know the area. Some even have been spotted climbing between the power lines. Just, you know. Hey, it's a weekend. What do you do? You drink some Budweiser and you climb the power lines. You hammock on power towers. Towers of power. Isn't that a band? The power lines can carry... Can you guess how many kilovolts, guys? 75,000. 75,000. That's not enough to kill a human being. That's hammocking. Oh, yes, it is. It is. It's actually enough to kill 75,000 <laughs> humans. No, I don't know. <laughs> but it's a lot of kilovolts. Electricity can jump from power lines, the sheriff's office wrote, in case you guys aren't aware how electricity works. I don't want to be anywhere near power towers, to be honest with you. I would never even consider hammocking. I prefer two trees. That's what I like to hammock under. Very safe. Unless, of course, the trees are struck by lightning. Then, of course, you're going to get some kilovoltage through your bum bum. But most of the time, you're good to go between two beautiful, majestic trees in the forest or jungle or woods or wherever, along a plateau, along a plain, in a valley, wherever you want to hammock. Anywhere is better than a power line, I'd imagine, but people want to do it. I don't know. Is this a dare? Is this one of those TikTok challenges? Hammocking on the power lines? I got to get more information. Let's keep reading. I can read, guys. The sheriff's office and Rocky Mountain Power will start patrolling the area more heavily. <laughs> yeah, you should be droning this area heavily. And anyone caught on the towers may be cited for trespassing. Maybe. <laughs> you might not. They might just, I don't know, give you a little picnic basket and leave. <laughs> they might just come by and see, oh, no, this one's sleeping. Let's, let's leave her. She can. St we don't want to wake her up. No, she's really enjoying the hammock on the power line. So you may be cited for trespassing on the power lines. <laughs> of all places. Yeah, we want to discourage people from hammocking on the power lines. Maybe, maybe we'll write them a ticket if they trespass onto the power lines. Maybe we will. We might not. We might. It depends. If it's a lovely day with a cool breeze, we're going to let them swing. We're going to let them swing along those power lines for a little bit, get their money's worth. <laughs> I mean, they've went to the effort to climb up the tower. We might as well, you know, let them have a nice time. It's a Sunday afternoon. <laughs> Here's a quote from the Facebook post by the sheriff's office. We would really hate to see someone injured from either a fall or perhaps an electrocution. Parents, parents, please pass this along to your children's. <laughs> yeah. And why don't you tell all the Walmarts to let anyone know who's buying a hammock on their way out. Hey, this hammock, best between two trees. Please don't use it on a power tower. You like podcasts? You're listening to my podcast. Maybe you thought to yourself, I'd like to make a podcast. Too difficult. No, not with Anchor. Anchor has free creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast from your phone or your computer. Anchor distributes your podcast to Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, and more. They have advertising integration, so you can even make a little money off your podcast. Everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And good luck with your podcast. Good luck with your creation. Good luck with your life, man. Bacon may disappear in California as a new pig rule takes effect. Oh no, I like bacon. I don't want to see it disappear. I want to say bye bye to bacon. I love it. Let me get some more information. Maybe I can still have bacon in my state. Thanks to a reworked menu and long hours, Jeannie Kim managed to keep her San Francisco restaurant alive during the coronavirus pandemic. Good for you, Jeannie Kim. My guess is you're serving up some bacon. That makes it all the more frustrating for Jeannie. She fears her breakfast-focused diner could be ruined within the months following this new ruling that could make one of her top menu items, bacon, extremely hard to get in California. Here's a quote from Kim. Our number one seller is bacon, eggs, and hash browns. It could be devastating for us if we couldn't have the bacon part. Kim, who for 15 years has run Sam's American Eatery on Market Street. It's a very busy breakfast diner. It sounds lovely. I would love to eat at Kim's Breakfast Diner. I love a greasy diner. I ate it one a couple days ago. And of course I got bacon. I didn't get hash browns. I got home fries because... 
You get home fries. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Are you a, are you hash brown people or home fry people? Home fries, man. There's no choice here. Home fries, guys. Right? Are we all on board with home fries? You get home fries. Do you think that you don't think that hash brown was just frozen? It's frozen, bro. It's frozen. Go with the home fries. They're fresh. Okay, I'm gonna get off my home fries tip. Okay. People in, the, in other parts of the world are like, what home fries? What are you talking about, Jonesy? Home fried potatoes. Just look them up. Uh, it says at the beginning of next year, this is bad news. California is going to begin enforcing an animal welfare proposition that requires more space for breeding pigs, egg laying chickens, and veal calves. Oh, they're going to spread them out a little bit. They're not spreading, spreading them out to social distance them for the pandemic. They're spreading them out so that they can have a better quality of life before they are slaughtered and then, and then digested in my belly. <laughs> we want to have them. We want to make sure they have enough room to roam around and have a good time. I want my pigs to be able to play Xbox and have a great time. I want happy pigs in my belly before I slice them off and eat them. <laughs> I don't do the slicing. No, <laughs> before, I, before somebody else slaughters them and then, Puts them on a skillet for my consumption at a delicious greasy spoon of a breakfast diner joint. I want them to have a nice life. I want them to 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 be to be I want them to be able to sing karaoke and play dominoes. Maybe just really have a lovely time. Um, dress them up in lovely modern clothing. <laughs> just have a. <laughs> I want them to have a block party before I I mow on them. It says here the national veal and egg producers are optimistic that they can meet the new standards, but only four four percent of hog operations now comply with these new rules. Unless the courts intervene or the state temporarily allows non-compliant meat to be sold in the state, California will lose almost all of its pork supply. No, it can't be. Pork producers will face higher costs. To regain a key market. Well, guys, invest in pork bellies right now. I gave you that tip right now. Get get on there and invest in the pork bellies. Animal welfare organizations for years, apparently, have been pushing for more humane treatment of farm animals. But the California rules could be a rare case of consumers clearly paying a price for their beliefs. For their beliefs that the animals should have a lovely life before they are beheaded and then eaten in my belly. In the form of maybe a breakfast burrito featuring eggs and bacon and home fried potatoes. Maybe some sausage. <laughs> I want my sausage to be, I want happy sausage. Okay. Take my pigs to a Dodger game and feed them Dodger dogs. That's weird. Isn't that a form of cannibalism? We don't know because we don't know what's in those hot dogs. Could be pigs. Could be horses. We don't know. We really don't know. <laughs> Everybody's so up in arms about, oh, the animals. Okay. I'm sorry. I know some of you are very sensitive about it. Okay. I'm sorry. I know. I know. I want my chickens massaged before I boil them. <laughs> Before I add them to my delicious chicken Alfredo and penne. <laughs> we got someone named Matt Sutton, who's a public policy director for the California Restaurant Association. I'd imagine Matt's very concerned that there's going to be a shortage of bacon, as I am. Matt said, we are very concerned about the potential supply impacts and therefore cost increases of pork products. My goodness. California's restaurants and groceries use about... All right, let me ask you guys, how many millions of pounds of pork a month is used by California's restaurants and groceries? Can you guess? Let's go. Can't use the Jeopardy theme because I'll be sued for copyright infringement. Scooby-Doo, but I'll do a variation of the Jeopardy theme. I love Alex Trebek. Okay, it's 255 million pounds of pork a month. Wow, that's crazy. Is that like a pound per, is that like three pounds per person in the state of California? How many people live in California? Probably about 40 million, I'd say. Am I right? Wow, that's almost like, that's, that's about, what, six pounds a person a month? Pork? I don't eat that. I don't think I eat that much. Seems like a lot. <laughs> uh, the National Pork Producers Council. They have a pork producers council. I could work for them. <laughs> 
Just eat bacon all day? What do you do? They asked the U.S. Department of Agriculture for federal aid to help pay for the hog facilities and to offset these prices. Hey, help us pay for our bacon. We love I want my bacon wrapped scallops. And you'll have to help subsidize. I need bacon. I need pounds of bacon wrapped scallops a month. Please, federal government, U.S. Department of Agriculture, please help us, please. Please, I need my bacon, all right? My arteries need it. Oh, get in my belly. Get that pig in my belly. Are you guys bacon people? Do you like the bacon? I notice people are now on the fence about bacon these days. Well, there's always turkey bacon. I like turkey bacon as well. You guys like turkey bacon? What's your favorite kind of bacon? Is there some sort of vegan bacon that I need to know about? Like cauliflower bacon? What are they making bacon out of now? <laughs> I'm sure they've found something. Oh, we're just putting leaves on the skillet, <laughs> flipping them over. <laughs> Do you, can you, ooh, nothing beats the smell of sizzling leaves in the morning. Mm, as my breakfast is cooking. <laughs> ooh, is it kale bacon? You guys are just frying up some kale? What are you doing? <laughs> Uh, I don't know how you guys do it. The fortitude. The fortitude. Yeah, that's commitment, guys. Because that food is gross. I'm just kidding, guys. It's delicious. <laughs> but not as delicious as bacon. Let's be real. Oh, can you buy a candle that smells like sizzling bacon? I would love that. There's got to be a candle that smells like bacon. I'm going to have to go to a Yankee candle and see if they got a bacon-flavored smelling candle. I'm sure they do. If anybody has it, it's Yankee. <laughs> Yankee candle. <laughs> Uh, yeah, what was that story I did about the guy who went to a was it a Bath and Body Works and sprayed bear mace? <laughs> Crazy. Uh, that's another good place to spray bear mace in a Yankee candle where everybody's just taking whiffs, <laughs> whiff, 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 whiff. Oh no, bear mace! All right, that was just a callback to a story I did a week ago. I don't know if you guys were you guys around for that. Um, I don't know if you guys listen on a daily, but you should. You should listen every day. Because you're going to miss some good stuff. Because not every story is a, is, is a gem. Not every story is a great performance by me because I improv a lot of this. So it's a lot of times it's depending on my mood. And maybe sometimes I'm just not into it. I'm just not having a good day. And so sometimes the stories just aren't, they're quite, not quite up to par. But other days they're just killer. They're just, cr I'm just crushing it. So you got to listen every day, guys, to get, the, to get the full spectrum of the performance here. Okay, where was I? Um, I've been on, on a tangent. I haven't even said uh, thank you for joining me for this outro. But thank you for joining me for the outro, making it all the way to the outro. Thanks to everyone who sent me Florida stories. I hope you enjoyed the Florida Friday episode. I, I recorded it on the run, basically. I was very, um, I had time constraints, constraints, but I made it work, thankfully. I can't miss a Florida episode, guys. All right, it's a lot of pressure. But I hope you enjoyed those. Hope you had a, I hope you had a nice weekend. And uh, what else? Oh, yeah, join the Patreon. Join my Patreon. Check it out at least. Patreon.com slash Weird AF News. You can support the show and you get extra Weird AF content. Doesn't that feel good? Doesn't that make you feel good? I knew it would. So check it out or go to WeirdAFNews.com. Yay!